It's Friday. You know, I'm, I'm, there's going to be a Rebecca Black joke. I'm calling it. I'm just glad you're trying, Caesar. Can encouragement feel insulting? Yeah, they're kind of talking to MC like he's the special kid here. It's, it's a little bit demeaning. What's up, everybody? Caesar Madrazo here, and we are back with more Doki Doki Summertime. Now, in the last episode, we left off in the middle of our um, spontaneous date with Yuri. So let's go ahead and just pick up right where we left off. She looks away, and her amused smile starts to waver as she finishes that sentence. Maybe she just didn't find my joke that funny? Our table, like most of the others, has a small menu with all the drinks and meals listed. I look through it, but find nothing particularly interesting. What did I expect? Scrambled Easter eggs? I join Yuri in looking out the window. Sitting in silence together almost feels like an intimate exercise. It feels weird but in a good way. Outside, the storms subdued into a meager trickle and rays of sunshine shoot through the newly formed gaps between the gray clouds. Oh, oh, what's the time? Yuri lets out a quiet gasp as she looks on her phone. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I didn't inform my mother about going elsewhere after the library. It's not that late. Do you think she's already worried? She could be. Nonetheless, I'd like to thank you for this little adventure. It doesn't have to end here. Yuri looks at me like I said something wrong. Uh-oh. I mean, I've got nothing better to do. I might as well walk you home. Walk me home? Yeah, you know. We could chat on the way. You're in a hurry. I'm not. It works out, see? In indeed. We leave the diner after returning our cups and jug. Since the rain is still trickling, we quickly make our way to the nearest bus stop and wait under the shelter's roof. Like yesterday, we are lucky enough to find two seats available, and we sit side by side. Man, I wish that that people could get this lucky in real life. Whenever I board the bus with friends, there are never two seats available, or very rarely there are two seats available. A conversation develops, although it's a bit one-sided. The next day, he wakes up and forgets everything that happened between him and his childhood friend. Uh, <laughs> is this more, uh, telling the DDLC story inside of, uh, this mod? I don't get it. So, it's like he has amnesia from the shock of seeing the girl die in such a gruesome way, not being able to save her. Yep. The events don't stop there. In fact, all his friends die in tragic ways as the day progresses. The reader is led to believe one of the leading characters is behind it all, but in the end, even she dies. Well, uh, that, that's kind of true in DDLC, because technically we kill Monica, but she doesn't actually go away. I still don't get it. I mean, the whole appeal of such a story. Ooh, I was rambling again, wasn't I? It's okay. No, I should pay more attention. I've been told that despite my valuable insights in literature, I can't force my passion upon others. So if you ever feel overwhelmed by me, don't be afraid to just say, stop. Like a safe word? <laughs> Come again? Quick, change the subject! So, uh, what's your favorite food? Ha <laughs> ha that's quite the change in subject, Caesar. <laughs> Called you out. That's what I was going for, being stealthy about it didn't work, however. But since you asked, the one thing that comes to my mind are crepes. Oh, crepe? Specifically, one with peanut butter and banana filling. Maybe I'm just fond of it because of some memories. What kind of memories? So, uh, Caesar, what's your favorite color? So, now she's changing subject. Um... <laughs> What is Yuri doing with crepes? This one time I get the hint and let go of my question. Our conversation continues for a few minutes, then Yuri looks out the window and goes silent for a couple of seconds. Turning back, she stares intently into my eyes. Ooh. We're here. I push the stop signal and we get off the bus shortly after. We go the rest of the way on foot, slowly nearing the end of this little adventure in the sunset. Yuri's phone buzzes on the way. She reads the short text message and puts it away with the same elegance shown in the way she walks. I believe this is it. I don't know how to pay you back for today. What? I paid for half the tea. Oh, maybe this will do for now. Monica sent a text about meeting at an ice cream shop tomorrow. I would like to invite you too. Maybe we could continue our adventure. Mmm. I'm down for that. Splendid. Yuri explains the details of tomorrow's meeting and goes silent again. I guess it's time to say goodbye. She hesitates to speak, then leans in and gives me a kiss on the cheek. Damn! So, a kiss on the cheek on the first date with Yuri, that's, uh, well, one, the first thing that comes to my mind is, that is, uh, 
very bold for Yuri. Then again, you know, Yuri is a very intimate person. But the second thing that crosses my mind is, you know, we went on a date with Monica on Tuesday, and nothing like this happened. In fact, she kind of brushed us off. We went to that bridge, and then she's kind of like, okay, I'm going home. So, um, wow. Yuri is being uh, even more forward than Monica is. As she pulls back, I barely have enough time to see her face blushing bright red before she swiftly rushes through the entrance of her house. The... thanks. <laughs> so are we... are we changing routes here, guys? Is this Monica route gonna turn into a Yuri route? It's Friday. You know, I'm... I'm there's gonna be a Rebecca Black joke, I'm calling it. It's Friday. Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Yep. Saw it coming. I know how this mod works. I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm not looking forward to anything, but up until a week ago, most of the days seemed like a blur, and often I wasn't sure what day of the week it was. I don't know how much longer this will last, but I'm glad Sayori introduced me to her friends. I'm not invested enough in literature to join their club, but with all the new things that happened, who knows what else this summer could bring. There's definitely a kind of connection between me and Sayori. This, uh, could this be a revival of our friendship, or something more? Yuri and I had a great time together despite the weather trying to get in the way. She was helpful, invested, and she even said we could continue our adventure. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but these both sound pretty promising. However it goes, it will only go forward if I actually reach out and take the opportunity with my own hands. After all, doing nothing didn't get me too far, I feel. With that, I embark on my journey to the ice cream shop Yuri told me about yesterday. So, they built that up as if we still have the option of going after Sayori, even though we haven't appealed to her in any of the poems. Um, they didn't mention Monica at all, though, even though we, I think, we appealed to her in one poem and we had that Tuesday walk with her, so... I don't know. Interesting. Maybe Yuri is, uh, well, Sayori, but maybe Yuri is the option to go with at this point, so we'll see. As I arrive, I recognize two of the girls chatting at the table. I'm telling you, they're literally retelling the same story over and over again. With each of them giving their own take on how things would happen, correct? You wish! Most of them are literally just trying to force a sappy ending onto a story that's meant to be unpredictable and sad. Hey, mind if I join in? Welcome back, Caesar. I'm glad you could make it. Yeah, hi, so where was I? Have you seen Sayori and Monica? Monica is bound to appear at any moment since she is the least likely of all of us to disappear without a good reason. Caesar, just look around you. You think Sayori would miss out on this? A brand new ice cream shop and hanging out with her best friends? Guess you don't know her well enough. You should have seen her at the school festival. Now that she mentioned it, um, I didn't see her at the festival all day. I doubt she was avoiding me. We probably just visited the stands at different times. What do you mean? We barely finished our performances. The first thing on her mind was, can we go to the cafe now? I remember there being a sort of cafe in one of the classrooms. They served several drinks and snacks. Their chocolate cake was delicious, and I even bought an extra one to take home. As I'm recalling all the stands in my mind, Natsuki kept going on about their experience at the festival. And I got a plushy tiger hat. That sounds really cute, Natsuki. <laughs> at this moment, I knew I messed up. I'm not cute! Speaking of cute, Sayori arrives with her neon green bird plushie tucked under her left arm. If she was wearing PJs, I'd swear she just fell out of bed. Sayori brought a plushie? <laughs> so that's kind of like what I was talking about, uh, I think, two episodes ago. How they're making Sayori even more childlike than she was in the original game. Which, uh, I guess they need to have uh, surprises surrounding these characters in some way, so... Her wide smile is radiating with joy as she uh, waves at us immediately after noticing us. She puts down Mr. Bird next to her as she takes her seat. Hi, everybody! Seriously? You brought a plushie? Way to boost the atmosphere. What? What do you mean? Plushie? Ice cream? You? Can we add anything to make it more kid-friendly? See, Natsuki is following my point. Cupcakes with kitten faces! Hey! Anyway, why are you so late, Sayori? Do I need to have a talk with you about oversleeping again? Natsuki imitates cracking her knuckles, but in a playful manner. Ooh. Well, uh, I was all set to leave home. Then I, uh, I accidentally... She muttered something under her nose, but with a sneaky smile curving on her face. <laughs> Alright. You accidentally what? The whole thing. I'm gonna guess she accidentally ate a whole cake. 
Sayori, could you clarify what is it you accidentally did? Well, I was just holding it in my hand, then I... Hello, and welcome to Stone Cold Steve's. What can I get you? Ice cream! We look behind us and see the one greeting us is an all-too-familiar person. Monica. Ha! You thought it was a waitress, but it's me. But it was me, Monica. <laughs> Monica has a look on her face like, yeah, I totally got you. That wasn't that good of a joke, Monica. Don't flatter yourself. Monica gets a chuckle out of Natsuki and Sayori, but the joke seems to have flown over Yuri's head. Well, it didn't fly over her head, she just didn't think it was funny. <laughs> Hello, Monica. If you're the waitress, I have one request. Please, can you make Natsuki read a real book for once? That was uh, out of nowhere and slightly unnecessary, Yuri. Damn, she was hiding her power level. Shut up! Ugh, even your jokes sound like a quote from some novel. You don't like to read books, Natsuki? Of course I do! Well, a few. I just don't read them super seriously. Unlike some people here, Yuri only wants one thing, and it's freaking disgusting. I concur, Natsuki. As I just demonstrated, I am fond of the occasional, how you say, banter. Whatever you say, Princess of Darkness. I actually like that. <laughs> she would. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. Didn't you want to continue the topic from a minute ago? Oh yeah! What was the topic? We were dissecting the various aspects of stories written by hobbyists we read on the internet. Yep! You know, I'm not crazy about good grammar, but are some people really this bad at it? Some people can't help it, Natsuki. Like you've never heard of proofreading. Monica looks away and lightly shrugs her shoulders. I wouldn't want to start an argument about grammar either. Regrettably, I have to agree. Publishing a work of such low quality tells more about the writer herself or himself than the characters in the story. So yeah, I could look past that. Then there's stuff that just doesn't make sense. A character says some sad stuff and she's grinning like a carved pumpkin lantern. Or when somebody literally says, sigh. How hard is it to write, I sigh, she sighs, etc. That is quite an amateur mistake. If I may add, I read horror iterations of that one specific story they made inordinate variations of, and apologies in advance, but there's a fine line between horror and a parody. Throwing in cheap scares just for the sake of it is even worse than not having them at all. It's like trying to build atmosphere by haphazardly painting a room red halfway and filling it with an extremely strong musty smell. The only way that it's scary is if you prepaid for renovating that room. <laughs> Yuri lets out a very stressed sigh. I'm sorry, I'm finished. I don't get what you two are talking about. <sighs> the three girls laugh at Yuri's remark. If jokes were airplanes, this would be an airport. Come on girls, it's not like any of us had a great deal of success when we tried crafting our first stories. Just remember when we started sharing poems. I loved reading everybody's poems. I wish mine was this good. Sayori, you're doing it again. Eh? Monica shoots Sayori a knowing smile. It took her a couple of seconds to reciprocate, like waiting for a ball that's being passed to her. Even your first one was decent, at least. You talked about your poems in the club? Yes, we did. I even offered writing tips each meeting. Ah, I actually wrote one myself. <laughs> what? Caesar's own p poem? Would you mind sharing it with us? That is, if it's not too much to ask for. Yes, please. I want to have a good laugh. Natsuki. We won't laugh at it, I promise. Can you show it to us? I'm warning you now, it's pretty short. A short and simple one can be just as good. I agree, it's your technique that matters, not the length. I'm just glad you're trying, Caesar. Can encouragement feel insulting? Yeah, they're kind of talking to MC like he's the special kid here. It's it's a little bit demeaning. Although, okay, I'm, I'm anticipating that the joke here is going to be that it's just going to be a string of words, like from, from uh, the original game. And all the girls are going to be like, this isn't a poem, it's just like a, a, wrist of, a list of random words. And why do I feel like we're not talking about my poem anymore? <laughs> are they talking about your life? Just, I'm, I'm, you know, good for you for still trying, man. Just, you know, you, you go get them. <laughs> I put my hand into my jeans and pull it out. Here it is. I first take it to Monica. I, I can tell by the look on her face. It's going to be the string of words joke, I'm calling it. Then say, or <laughs> look at their faces. They're all just like, uh, uh, yeah. What's so funny, Caesar? Is this the poem you wrote? Uh, um, I don't know how to break it to you, Caesar. Poems aren't just words we like. Is that what he wrote? <laughs> 
I put my phone back into my pocket. They were probably just saying they don't mind it if it's short, just to get me to show it. Oh, they were egging you on? That's enough, Natsuki. Let's not demonize Caesar so quickly. He could be a misunderstood creative genius. What's that, Yuri? Did he pick your favorite words? <laughs> anyway, why don't we go and buy ice cream now? Ice cream! Sayori, please don't scream next to my ear. Heh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Yuri. Sayori whispers with a playful expression on her face. Ice cream. <laughs> we walk over to the display and browse the huge selection of ice cream flavors. Yuri glances over all of them, including the extras one can get, and talks to the shopkeeper with a clear idea on her mind on what she desires. Natsuki and Monica are still browsing. Monica's conflicted between two variants of coffee-based flavors. Natsuki is eyeing the prices of the cheaper, more traditional flavors. Meanwhile, Sayori is like a kid in a candy shop and is saying her thoughts out loud about which one she had the longest time ago. Debating with herself uh, if she should listen to her tummy or her mind, I have a feeling I know which one is winning. As I'm about to pay for my order, Monica sidles up behind me and talks to me in a hushed voice. How about you get the tab for all of us, Caesar? Up. Oh! Okay, so now Monica's trying to bum us for some ice cream, just like the coffee. Monica, I think you can afford it. You know, Little Miss upper class neighborhood with the red Corvette in the parking lot. I think that, uh, I think you can pay for your own ice cream, thank you very much. Yeah, how about, no. Yeah, good answer. Good answer, MC. She lets out a chuckle. Not today, Monica. Not any day, Monica. Does she think I won the lottery? That would fundamentally change things. Not be a convenient way to pay for sweets. After we all placed our orders and sat down at our table, however, Monica doesn't have any ice cream. On a diet, Monica? To the contrary, I'm having a cheat day. I'm not supposed to cheat, I know, but I think just a bit of guilty pleasure won't hurt us any at this time. Everyone starts munching down on their bowls of ice cream. Yuri and Natsuki carve small bits off, but at a noticeably different pace, Sayori is at it like she... Uh, ah! What's wrong, Sayori? Ah! Ah! Brain freeze. Like she forgot it's not a good idea to rush it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just doing it Caesar style. You know how it is. Me. <laughs> Even the ice cream tastes worse than a joke like that. Well, I mean, you didn't say that to anybody, so... Were you, were you saying that joke to the player? Like, is MC suddenly aware that he's just a puppet for the player to go through this mod? Your order, miss. Thank you. What? Ah! That's huge! That's what she- everyone is intrigued by the t the icy masterpiece, and Monica gives a detailed list of its contents. It's covered in almonds, chocolate syrup, caramel, five different flavors of ice cream, two of which are coffee-based, whipped cream, and of course, the cherry on top. After she finishes saying that, she takes the cherry with one elegant motion and pops it in her mouth. Certain thoughts pop into my head at the same time. <laughs> uh, MC still being a class act. Natsuki and Sayori are already finished with their bowls, and Monica isn't even the third of the way through. Natsuki, do you like any of these flavors? Y yeah Why? Sharing is caring. Huh? Come on, grab a spoon and we'll share it. I don't know if she's only saying that because she realized she ordered too much, or she just wanted to surprise Natsuki. Yuri and Sayori are chatting while Monica and Natsuki dig into the big bowl of multi-covered sweetness. Okay, everyone. I'm full. <laughs> That's not really what I meant to say, it just came out. So, would anybody like to play the acronym game again? Again? Yeah, but not today. How about you, Yuri? It was rather enjoyable last time we played, so I'll take part. Well, I, for one, am in the mood to play it at least once. So, Caesar? Let's get started. Oh, look at this, guys. So... We have to choose either Monica or Yuri. Well, I let you guys vote last time, so I'm gonna let you guys vote again, because we're about at the 20 minute mark here. So who's it gonna be, guys? Monica or Yuri? Hey guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. It looks like we're reaching the end of the first route here, so it's pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what happens next. But until next time, I'm Cesar Madrazo, and I am out.